Hey everyone, uh, Stan here, and I want to share with you this week's incident weather. Uh, so uh, earlier on Threat Track, you heard some interesting stories about um, ransomware and all the threats. Uh, but this is how we measure uh, cyber threats uh, that have to do with exploitation activity um, and uh, port scanning traffic. So our top 10 most pro ports report, it measures scanning activity against uh, a variety of UDP and TCP ports uh, that are interest, of interest and it's measuring it by the volume of scanning that's happening on that port. So in looking at this week's list, um, there's actually not a lot of um, a change or movement from previous weeks. It seems like the top 10 ports are pretty well rooted uh, week to week. Um, you know, some ports jump in and out. Um, the two ports that I'd like to dive in a little bit deeper um, into this week are port 445 TCP, which is generally associated with SMB, um, and actually the Eternal Blue um, exploit, um, and um, port 5555 TCP which is generally associated with the Android debug bridge or some devices, um, DVRs, I think, uh, that may have shipped with the uh, Android debug bridge port open uh, by default. Um, so let's dive right in here and see what the numbers look like. So looking at port 445 TCP activity, we've covered this many, many times on ThreatTrack, and uh, everyone's probably familiar uh, with this chart, which shows the number of devices participating in scanning activity on port 445 TCP, which generally indicates um, how many devices might be infected actually with WannaCry. So this is about three years' worth of activity, and uh, early on you could see sometime in 2017 uh, it was about uh, 30,000 devices per hour scanning, and actually if you go and look maybe six months past that, uh, before that, you'll notice that uh, there was even less scanning activity, maybe somewhere in the order of five to 10,000 devices per hour, and it wasn't until uh, Eternal Blue exploit was released sometime in uh, 2017, uh, and WannaCry started spreading, uh, that the numbers started going and, and being this large. It is a little disheartening uh, that the amount of scanning activity um, you know, has persisted and this really does indicate the number of devices that are infected with WannaCry, and it's a it's a it basically a huge worm uh, that's spread on the internet for you could see now many years. Um, it's funny when I started my career, people were talking about like a, you know SQL uh, like SQL Slammer, like these different worms that predated my career in cybersecurity. But now I can look back and and lament on how great it was when the scanning activity was only uh, you know, 10,000 devices per hour. Um, there is a little bit, if you look in the past six months or so here, um, there is a little bit of a worrying trend as the number of devices that seem to be infected is trending upwards a little bit. Um, so we'll definitely keep an eye on that. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, this chart just really shows you how once something becomes a worm, it's really, really difficult to eradicate, unfortunately, and it could take many years uh, to get a, a handle on it. The other port that I thought was interesting is uh, port 5555 TCP, so 555 TCP, which is commonly associated with um, Android debug bridge. But looking at about 30 days worth of activity, you could see um, activity that's happening right now in terms of scanning volume uh, is about the same as it's been in the past 30 days. Um, and so the reason that it's appeared in our report now is it is more than the previous week. Uh, but the number of devices doing this um, has stayed pretty steady. Um, I was curious about it. So I took the last four hours of IP addresses that are doing scanning, and I wanted to find out you know, where are these devices located uh, predominantly. And there was about 8,000 or so IP addresses that came back in the last few hours is doing scanning on this port. Um, and you can see um, that the scanning profile or the device profile uh, seems to be really heavy in the US, um, Brazil, other parts of South America, um, also lots of devices in Asia, Southeast Asia, and, um, and Europe, uh, including, I guess, uh, some parts of Northern Africa there and the Middle East. So uh, whatever these devices are, uh, or whatever botnet they're part of, uh, it, it is pretty widely distributed. 
You don't see every country represented, though, uh, like you normally would. For example, uh, India uh, is almost completely um, unscathed, I guess, by, by the devices that are participating in this, uh, whereas with some other threats, um, we do see that. So generally, this speaks to the type of device or the uh, proliferation of that device type in certain markets uh, or parts of the world. You know, it's an interesting distribution of where this stuff is coming from, you know, the, the hot spots here. Um, I, I don't know what to make of the distribution, but it, it, it's always interesting to see where this traffic is actually sourcing from to perhaps give you a clue as to why it's coming from there. But, you know, I don't know. I, you know, I can't make heads or tails of why that is. So I'd also like to share uh, scanning activity, but this time from the most sources program perspective. And it's a very similar activity, um, uh, except this time measures for um, the number of devices uh, doing the scanning. And this usually helps us identify uh, either large botnets or worms that are participating in concert to do something together, and, and in this case, um, scanning activity. So the port I'd like to concentrate on this week is A291 TCP. This is something that we've covered before as well, uh, but I'd just like to give you an update on what the activity looks like today. So looking back at the last 30 days of uh, activity, I actually included a port that wasn't on the top 10, uh, 8728 TCP, as well as 8291 TCP, uh, to showcase um, the scanning profile here. And as you look at the stack chart, you can actually see uh, that the activity on both ports happens in concert. And the reason for that is because both of these ports are associated with management interfaces on MicroTik routers. Um, and it appears that someone is looking for these devices um, pretty regularly. You could see earlier in the month, there was uh, lots of devices doing scanning in concert. Uh, but more recently, uh, the activity is really trended down um, as to how many devices are doing it together all at the same time. Um, now, what, do you, what are they looking for? Uh, we've covered this as well before on ThreatTrack, but this is basically the uh, management interfaces for uh, MicroTik devices. And if you are able to successfully get the password or log into these interfaces, you'd actually be able to possibly upload firmware, change configurations of the MicroTik device, enable um, SH tunnels and things of that nature. Um, and a lot of adversaries actually like to use these devices as part of their compromised infrastructure to host other malware or to tunnel malware uh, from, you know, and anonymize uh, the traffic. So uh, it's definitely interesting to keep an eye on this. Um, and we've been monitoring it and we'll continue to do so. Unfortunately, this is one of the situations where really the, um, the, the users of the routers uh, have to uh, take care of how they deploy the routers. Right. But if there's anything that the manufacturers of any device can do in order to assist people in, you know, making it more secure out of the box, not exposing these interfaces by default and having to turn them on via some other mechanism, uh, I feel like that would be a good approach um, for solving problems like this, the situation. So or that's makes them for, uh, change their password a, as soon as they, you know, just simple simple things like that, making it, it doesn't start working until it, uh, you have a complex password changed or something. You know, those are the kinds of things we'd like to see, right? Um, right. Or in one general, of from, from manufacturing. So with that, I'd like to conclude this week's Internet Weather Report. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, and if there's uh, any of our viewers have ideas about um, activity that they'd like to see explored or understood better, uh, please go ahead and um, comment in the video below um, and we'll try to see if we can explore that topic.